joined now by the double champ, Reggie Nurso. Guys, please do remember to raise your hands and we will get to your questions. You can either send in your question via the chat or we will open your mic. First up, got to ask you, two belts. How does that feel? It's two belts. It's one of my life goals, you know. And uh, yeah, I did it, man. You have to call me champ champ now. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, a question's coming in for the champ champ from the global media. First up is Vincent Richards of Sports Kita, who asks, in Holland, the emphasis is on Dutch kickboxing, but you've been able to win the Muay Thai world title. What does that say about your striking abilities and the training style of your gym compared to other gyms in the Netherlands? Well, you know, my gym is Sichotong Amsterdam, and everybody knows the name Sichotong. It's from a, a Thai gym in Thailand, you know, and we focusing on boats both sports, you know, kickboxing and Muay Thai. And if you know me, I before I signed the one championship, I was already a Muay Thai world champion. So it's not new to me, you know. So for me, it's like, I wouldn't say easy to adapt, but, um, you know, a little bit of ring rust and, but it was okay. You know, I really enjoyed it. Next up, the question comes from Luisa Morales of Philippine Star, who asks, it was a close fight. What do you think about a rematch with Sin Samut? How would you do things differently next time around? In my opinion, it was not a close fight. Um, if you saw the fight, uh, I think the first two round, I was like really like testing him. And I think from the third, fourth and fifth round, I put the pressure and uh, you saw his face at the end of the fight, you know, so. <laughs> Next question comes from Spin.ph, Randolph Leongson, who asks, how did it feel to fight in front of a rowdy crowd here in Kuala Lumpur? Did you get a boost from the noise when the fight started to heat up? Yes, this was the first time with audience since uh, COVID-19. And I really get a boost. Uh, in, you know, when I com was coming up and I heard my music and I, I heard the, the audience, you know, the people, and they were yelling, yelling for me. So it was really a boost for me also during the fight. That get me hyped up, you know. Onward to Kyle Siegel now from the Going Live Network. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, Regan. This is Kyle from the Going Live Network. Um, hey. We've loved watching you for years. Congrats. Clint me ha seemed like he tried to take the fight to you, which is usually, you know, you just countering. I mean, that's your bread and butter. Did, did you feel like he just entered your world and that's why you were so successful tonight? Um... No, I, I had the feeling I entered his world, you know. Um, he had a lot of more experience than me in Muay Thai, especially with the small gloves. So I was, you know, in the beginning of the fight, I was a little bit careful, you know, and, and I know he, he's a counter fighter. So um, I didn't really put the pressure. Um, but my game plan worked, you know, and I got the win. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what matters. And um, I mean, double champ sounds good, but triple champ and come to MMA. Is that something no. you're you're projecting next? Um, it's not a goal, but uh, I say never say never, you know. And uh, I leave that up to one championship, and yeah, that's it, man. It's I have an open future, you know. I, I'm I'm 29 now, so I still have a couple of years left. So let's see what what the future brings. In your prime, we love seeing you fight. Congrats, and uh, have a good rest of your night. Thank you, thank you. Cheers, Carl. Next up, it's Nick Atkin from SCMP. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, Regan. Yeah, congratulations, man. Thank you. Uh, I think, yeah, you talked about it a little already. I was quite surprised it was split decision. I thought it would be unanimous. Um, does Thank that kind you. of thing annoy you slightly when you, uh, your record is forever going to say uh, split decision? You know, you had a very close fight last time. I guess you wanted to put on more of an uh, authoritative uh, win this time. Yeah. Does it annoy you or do you care? Yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but it's okay, you know, it's Muay Thai and I fight against a Thai fighter, you know, and, you know, I fight in Asia, so it's his home, it's his hometown, town, you know, but it's okay, you know, I got the win, so that's the most important thing, and I, I think I show the world, you know, uh, what I'm, I'm capable of, and uh, yeah, that's it, man. And, you know, in my opinion, I think you're really one of the most underrated guys, as is funny, though, because you have two belts, but you're one of the real unsung heroes in one championship. You you fought a lot during the pandemic when the company needed you. They needed a main event. Uh, do you take pride in being like that reliable guy who takes any fight, always turns up, always makes weight and always wins? Thank you. 
Yes, you know, if you know me, I, I take any fight, you know, I, I just said it also after the fight. Put me here, one championship, and I will be here and I will fight. That's me, you know. Yeah, you, you're you looking to get back in soon then? Uh, yes, a few people course. have been calling for Manila. Is that is that too quickly, December? December, yeah, maybe. Um, I think I have a little, little bit injury on my knuckle, but uh, I will see how that goes and uh, maybe you'll see me December. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Well, can't wait. Whenever it is, uh, thanks, uh, thanks again for speaking to me and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Next up, we're going to go to Jeffrey Hu from Kung Fu Kingdom. Hey, man. Hey. First of all, congratulations on being a two-sport world champion within the one promotion. Thank you. So, um, yeah, now you won the Muay Thai world title. Um, who, whom do you plan on defending the belt against? You know, I have no name. You know, like I said before, one championship gave me a name and I will be there, you know. So I'm not like a really hype fighter and I challenge some people. I, no, man, I just want to fight, you know. Give me a fight, I will be here. So no name, just let me fight. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I also did see you do a little of that Kung Fu pose over there. Um, yeah. You happen to be a fan of like any like Kung Fu movies or like video games or anything? Um, not really. I, in the past, you know, when I was little, I watched Bruce, Bruce Lee with my father. Um, of course, everybody watched that, the, the movies of Bruce Lee. And, um, and what, what you say about games, um, I'm like really first special shooter. So, yeah, you know, like Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really nice to hear, coming, given that I'm a former Marine. So, anyways, yeah. okay. thanks, man, nice. and congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Next question comes from Sean Sheehan of Sherdog. Sean, you're up. Uh, hi there. I just want to ask you, you spoke earlier about the game plan and maybe to start a little bit slower and to, to kind of come into the fight and up the pace. How dangerous is that? Obviously, you're going in there against high-level strikers. If you start too slow... You could get hit with big shots or knocked out. In your opinion, what, what's the, the risks of that tactic? The risk of that thing, you know, it's already a risk to step inside the circle, you know, <laughs> especially against Klimni with small gloves. So, you know, as I said before, it's a challenge for me. And when I have to fight, I go with a game plan, you know, and you have to go with game plan A, game plan B, game plan C, you know, and the game plan A worked and um, yeah, it was just, uh, I'm just looking for uh, holes, the first and the second round and I put on the pace from the third, fourth, fifth round and it worked, you know, and yeah, it's always a risk to get hit, you know, and but you have to take that risk. Otherwise you, you don't get a performance like this. Uh, on that as well, you know, obviously uh, he landed a, a lot of leg kicks as did you and a lot of kicks t to the body as well. Was there yeah. any kind of thought in your head midway through the fight that these are going to add up and maybe that game plan won't be able to be produced in the fourth and fifth? Yeah, I was feeling the leg kicks. Um, and I, I was thinking, okay, I, I have to block the leg kicks, you know, otherwise um, I'm, you know, going to get like, uh, how do you say, pain in the, in, the, in the later rounds. And I did, if you saw the fight, I, I did block the, the leg kicks in the third, fourth and fifth round. And um, yeah, just head on with the game plan. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers, Sean. Next up is Abdullah from Verdict MMA. Hello, so congratulations on the win tonight. Oh, deep voice, man. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. You now hold two belts in one, in Muay Thai yeah. and kickboxing. Yes. Does either belt mean more to you than the other? No, man, no. You know... I am world champion of two sports now, and yeah, you can compare this, you know, it's there. I am both world champion, you know, so it's, it's the same for me. Thank you. And what would you say is the hardest sort of adaptation or obstacle you had to overcome starting out the fight in smaller gloves back in Muay Thai after a long time? The hardest 
thing was I think the four ounce gloves. Um, you know you can really defend with them, and uh, the punches come do do a lot of damage. And yeah, that's the best thing, you know. And and yeah, you have to adapt your fighting style. You cannot cover up like kickboxing, you know, because the gloves are bigger in kickboxing. Um, yeah, this is the only thing. Elbows are, I I used to to throw elbows on only this this time. Uh, I didn't do it like really well because the distance uh, with me and Klim was like really far away. So I, I didn't want to take the risk to go inside because, you know, he's a Thai fighter and he's used to throw elbows. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. That's a very insightful answer. And now that you have two belts, do you plan on being just as active, defending your Muay Thai belt as your kickboxing belt? Yes, I'm going to defend both belts. So that's the goal, you know. Both Thank you. I look forward to it. And the last one for me, how are you going to celebrate this win? I'm not like a guy that's going to celebrate a party, you know, and stay up late and so on. But, but I'm going to enjoy this, um, you know, spending time with my family because it was hard to any scam. And yeah, just enjoy my victory. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks, Abdullah. Next up is uh, a text question from Ben Imperial of Sports Kida, who asks, how do you grade since Samut as an opponent? Would you say he's one of the best that you faced? No, I don't think he's one of the best I faced. Um, the reason why his fight IQ was not that smart, um, they respectfully. Um, yeah, the only thing was he's a hard fighter, you know. He used to, to have the small gloves and that makes him dangerous. Um, he also won his last two two fights on KO, so that shows he got a lot of power in in, in his body. But besides that, um, no, he was not the hardest fight I ever had. You've proven yourself to be imperious in your striking ever since you joined one championship. Who out there in any division, any sport, MMA, kickboxing, Muay Thai, do you see as on your level has, has really impressed you? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. There's only be one person. That's me, you know. Respect. And I just want to dig a little bit deeper because your attitude is amazing when people, of course, they want to push you. Three belts next. So when you talk about MMA and that it's possible... What is your grappling background? How do you feel about grappling? And, and how do you feel about people like Cade Rotolo, the things that they're doing? What does grappling mean in your world? You know, um, to be honest, uh, to do grappling, I don't really like grappling, um, just to be honest. Uh, I, like, I really like the stand-up fighting. But I have a lot of respects, of course. Uh, my father is a black belt, Jiu-Jitsu. So if the offer comes, and you know, the... the terms are right and the championship says okay we have an MMA fight for you in the future um, and the terms are right trains in his gym become fighters uh, but uh, yeah I have a lot of respect you know the, the ground game is a different game man. very different so a lot of respect for you guys Kickboxing, Muay Thai, MMA, always war. Is, 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 we must watch. Yes, yes. You know, it's always a war. You know, when I'm, I'm, I'm here. You know, put on my mask, my war face go on, and showtime. Maximum respect, champ. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.